Right, ladies and gents, I am on the KTM 1290 Super Adventure S. I would say this is a first ride, but it's not. Uh, I rode it before and my audio was just non-existent. I don't know what happened, but well, I do. I think the microphone came out. I've got a couple of hours on it. I know you've got all the big YouTubers and everything saying it is so worth the hype and everything. I want to know if it actually is. So I've got a commute on a bike. I've got to uh, have fun on a bike. My weekend fun is always on this on my one bike because it's a cheaper way of doing it. And touring is also on that. I think this one starts at £14,999. You're going to want to add all the tech to it because it's KTM. You want the quick shifter, you want the rally modes and all that sort of stuff. I think the tech pack's about a grander, it's just over. But um, by the time you've added that and the heated grips and whatever, you're looking at about 16.2, which is still pretty damn good when you consider a fully spec GS to this level is, what, 18, 18 and a half, probably even more. For me, this is a bike that has to do everything. I want to be able to keep up with my mates on their sports or sportier bikes but I don't want to have to pay two sets of insurance or two sets of road tax. Two se I don't want to buy have two bikes in the garage. Well, I do, but I just can't afford it. So this bike with 160 horsepower and the absolute Asbo child that lives inside this thing ticks those boxes. Just nip past all of these. Considering this is a standard exhaust it sounds really naughty i'm having problems with gopro mounts today i bought a, a cheap amazon special gooseneck thing which i'll put in a picture here on the screen somewhere and that was crap it just kept moving around so i've got a concoction of uh mounts oh my god this thing <laughs> oh, that wasn't even half throttle. So, the first negative, which is what everyone sort of said. This indicator switch is a shit design. Oh, there's a tunnel. Do you know what I'm going to have to do? Because there's a tunnel. Oh my god, this thing sounds delightful! Oh! <laughs> oh wow! Oh, anyway, what was I saying? So yeah, the indicator switch, basically the, the only, like, it's completely fine ergonomically, it feels lovely. But the issue I'm having is when you, so if I indicate, Press, finding that middle cancellation button is really annoying. It's fine once you've got used to it and you know where it is. But sometimes you're just pressing on like, oh, come on. So that can be a bit annoying. It does have self-cancelling indicators though. So, nah. I know a lot of self-cancelling indicators turn off too quickly. I know a lot of them stay on for days. But yeah, this is fine. My second gripe is this screen. So the screen, I mean, I can't be too harsh on it because my bike, I had to put an aftermarket Puge screen on it. So I, I just have to do the same thing with this, but it's in its highest position now. And although the, I'm not getting any buffeting, the wind is here. So the wind is sort of just topping my helmet. Oi. By far, like the best thing about this bike is this engine. It is so much smoother than it was before. So I've ridden the previous gen and this one is just hands down. Like it is so much smoother, so much more tame, but it is also, it's the same thing as the Super Duke. The new version of the Super Duke is so good, but it's also like, it's so smooth, so livable, but it's also batshit crazy, which I really love. Like, I love, I love the fact that you can have a nice docile ride, kind of like this. I'm doing 65 mile an hour behind this Mondeo that won't speed up. I'm comfortable, I'm, it's easy. And then he moves over, 60, sixth gear, and it just absolutely takes off. And that, that's, that was half throttle. A lot of people moan about the seat on this, but I don't find it that uncomfortable. It's cupped well, it holds my uh, 
derriere quite nicely and um, it is hard yeah but then at the same time it's fine adaptive cruise control is one of the biggest things on this bike the only other bike you can get adaptive cruise control on of this style i know you can get it on like the rt i think it is but it's the multistrada and to get the one on the multistrada it's 21 grand but the adaptive cruise control i've tried it on this is amazing all you do press this button here and you get this logo come up on the screen and then you've got you could turn this off as well so if you just want normal cruise control you can do that um it's just in the menus and then you literally just press the plus button down here which is resume and there's a minus on the back and you can see here it's doing 69 mile an hour see that green car there it's a bit bumpy because i've got everything in sport mode <laughs> see the green car that that's basically saying it's found a vehicle in front of me so if i increase my speed to 78 it's not moving from 70 because it's seeing this motorbike in front of me which is really cool i didn't know whether it'd work with motorbikes but it does so that's amazing you can set your distance so if i go into the menus here if i come down here and go into cruise control that's what i mean you've got the comfort setting you've got sport setting and then you can turn it off and then you can also set the distance so you can set this is the shortest distance which is still i mean it's not too short this is a normal kind of following distance for a lot of people unless you're an audi or bmw driver so i'm still doing 70 mile an hour because of this bike in front now if i indicate it increases it by a thousand revs and then just speeds up for you up to your speed oh that's nice and then it's found so that oh look there you go that's a nice test so this car just pulled out in front of me it saw it and slowed down which is awesome this car's just accelerating so now i'm accelerated it's absolutely like don't get me wrong i get the people that are saying yeah but that takes away from your rider experience and stuff i want to ride my bike on nice cool roads i want to ride it on windy roads i want to ride it on all that sort of stuff i don't ride my bike to ride it on the motorway and motorways are boring let's be honest they are aren't they they're just really dull so taking that away from you and it works really well with average speed cameras as well because everyone's doing 50 so you leave it at 70 and then you just follow a van or whatever and it just follows that it's awesome it's so good and then when there are overhead speed cameras the car in front brakes for it and the bike slows down for you it's so good it's so easy now i've got nothing in front of me you can see the car's gone gray which means it doesn't find it but if i pull in in front of this watch that see there straight away it sees the car start slowing down pull back out great car goes off and it carries on i didn't think it'd be this good and i know a lot of people are getting them in cars and stuff but i'm just blown away i need to be careful because i haven't come into work for quite a while i didn't actually explain did i what i'm doing today is i'm going to nip into london to see what this is like day to day because that's where it means that's sort of what matters to me i need to see if i can use the bike daily can i filter on it can i deal with the motorway stuff and is it sort of easy enough to get through traffic is it too heavy as i mentioned quite a few times i'm quite short so i can't quite flat foot this bike i've got most of my feet on the floor but just not the um, balls of my feet like the my heels <laughs> This quick shift is awesome. So I saw George go going for a walk earlier, just riding this around. I was going home to grab my GoPros and whatever. And he went, oh, pull over, pull over, want to look at it, kind of thing. So I did, but when I pulled over, it was, like, it was on a curb or a dropped curb. So I pulled in and my feet couldn't quite touch the floor. And I was just like, ah, uh, it is quite a heavy bike. I think it's 220 kilos dry or something like that. I'll put a, I'll put a number on screen if it, uh, of what it is. But all I did, went into the menus, came down to the suspension setting, went down to preload adjuster. I wonder whether I can do it now. So you can see here that I'm sort of almost tiptoeing. If I just go to preload adjuster and drop that down, the bike lowers itself. And it, it is slowly, you won't be able to really notice it, but look, I can flat foot now. And then I just, if I put it up to 100%, it goes really high to the point where I can't really even get two feet down. So I just leave it on like 
and it's awesome but that that sort of that ability to just lower your bike if you get to a difficult bit is awesome it's so good <laughs> i'm gushing about this bike a bit aren't i one of the things that i was concerned about with this is the old bike was quite clunky at slow speed so if you're in third gear doing 40 mile an hour or 30 mile an hour it was a bit jar jar like it, you could feel it searching a bit but if i just put it into third i'm doing 26 mile an hour it is smooth as anything and then also <laughs> so much crop <laughs> the quick shifter is pretty buttery smooth the one gear i have found a little bit jolty is fifth to sixth but i mean i think sixth is like an overdrive gear um so you know give and take it doesn't really bother as long as, as long as you're sort of on the power it won't matter i do have a very i've got to fly on the helmet i do have a very commanding view of the road i know i say that on a lot of big bikes but i feel very high up and very like i can see everything The, as I was saying, the quick shifter. Quick shifter is very good. It's very smooth. Comparing it to the last generation quick shifter, this is so much smoother. You do have to be definite with it, if that makes sense. Like if you're not assertive with it kind of thing, it doesn't It doesn't miss a gear, it just doesn't change gear. So if I just like lazily do that, see what I mean? It didn't change gear and that was me going down. Whereas if I just press on it like you would, like pretend you're pulling the clutch in and it's fine everything is keyless on here as well and it actually works which is one of my biggest gripes i've moaned about it in like the xr video and stuff like that that some bikes have keyless ignition and it's sort of pointless because you still have to put the key in the fuel tank or something along those lines whereas this even taking the rear seat off is just a button i'm in the harshest of modes you can see down here i've got sport suspension on a sport mode up the top these bumps in these roads are crap and it is handling it so well the one thing i have noticed and i've sort of found a bit of a solution to is on the motorway in comfort mode like the comfort suspension mode should i say the back is really bouncy i've got to be careful there's a bloody money making scam up there the way i've solved that is if you go into comfort mode it's lovely and like lazy on the suspension it's not like bump 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 kind of thing and then you just jack your preload up so you literally just put it in comfort mode come down into your suspension mode and jack the preload up to like 60 70 and it's per like almost perfect if i'm off the throttle the quick shifter can get a little bit jolty it's not bad if you know what i mean it's just like it it, it feels i mean to be fair it feels like the gs is one the GS is, although the GS is smooth, it's quite agricultural. The other thing I really like, you can change gear whilst you're in cruise control, which is just awesome. Like most bikes cancel their cruise control. Oh, that's the horn. So look, if I just, I want to go down, cruise control's still on, cruise control's still on. Up and down, it doesn't matter. Oh, here's a test. Will it come to a stop? I really doubt, oh. Oh, it's breaking for me. Oh my God, that's weird. Oh my God, that's really weird. <laughs> Did you see that? It's basically stopped for me saying break. That is so fucking mad. That is really cool. Oh my God. I didn't, did not know that would do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Let's see if I can nip through here. It's not actually as wide as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a lot harder to get through traffic, but it's really not. It's a lot easier than the GS was. I took this out wanting to be really critical about it. Like, really wanted to be critical about it. As you might find out, there's, there's a reason for that. And apart from the screen and the indicator, I can't be critical about it. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Wow. Right, so we are now coming into Sterling Corner. This is completely fine. I can deal with this. It's like, it's easy enough to filter on. Oh, there's a tight space. Let's see what that's like. 
Bearing in mind I've been on this bike for a, probably a total of about three or four hours. And that was easy. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty dab hand at filtering if I say so myself. Just because I've done this like every day for however many years. As you can see, it's 19 degrees. That's really useful. The thing I hate about my tracer, like one of the bugbears, is there's two buttons on the screen so you can't see any information. You have to like cycle through it all. But this is just, it's all on the screen and you can change what you want showing, which is also really useful. Uh, but yeah, what was I saying? So one thing I will say, because it's quite warm today, it's 19 degrees outside, this bike is so much colder than the old, well, it's not a colder bike, but the heat, it, uh, heat transfer is designed so much better. So I don't know if you'll be able to see here, but there's big gaps here where, so it's got twin radiators now. The heat is blasted out the side, so it sort of comes out, it comes away from you before, instead of coming right under your legs. It is still quite warm though, when you sit there, when you're sitting in traffic, it is quite warm. Right, this is a big, big test. Big test. Oh, it's so easy. It is very balanced as well. These sort of side fuel tanks makes it so much better. Yeah, it is so much more balanced. <laughs> Why did I come into London? I mean, this is this is a massive testament to this bike. The fact that it's dealing with all of this without me, without complaining at all. It doesn't feel, I mean, it's obviously a bigger bike than my Tracer is, but I mean, come on. It's a 1300cc engine and it's just poodling around like it's completely fine. That's a really tacky sounding exhaust. I can't get over how chilled this is. just wheelies everywhere it's so so good and as an adventure bike this is it is everything a GS is but like imagine if you tickled the danglies of a, a GS and added a little bit more grunt to it that's what this is oh, I love it absolutely love this thing Oh my god, this thing's so quick! <laughs> it's so, so quick. It is actually, the mind boggles how a bike can be this fucking quick. I hate these junctions. This is Swiss Cottage if you're actually interested in London at all. So, if you want, if you are at the point where you are wanting something more comfortable and something that can tour and commute and be comfortable and sort of be out of the wind but you're still sitting there going no I, I want something stupid fast I really shouldn't have come this way should I <laughs> but you want someone that can something that can keep up with all your mates and a, like a hundred horsepower bike from Ti like a Triumph Tiger or anything like that is not cutting the mustard for you and you're not quite one of those GS guys just yet don't get me wrong, GS is an, a phenomenal bike, but everyone's got one. Like, literally everyone's got one. This will do everything the XR will do. Don't get me wrong, the XR's got better... If you want something for the track, the XR's better. But if you want something that will do everything, do a long tour, and also maybe a bit of off-road, this is the bike you want. Like... <laughs> It's just, oh, I can't get over how awesome this thing is. I don't miss this. Just the sirens every single day. Every 30 seconds I have to move out the way for a fucking fire engine or something. All right, cheers, man. So many people look at you on this as well. I think because, like, the, uh, the looks are very de divisive, so some people absolutely love it some people hate it and some people nice you f i mean like brooker for example hates the look of this and then 
over time he's just gone actually it's really quite cool isn't it it's different the gs looks better the s1000xr i'd argue probably looks better but if you want something that's different it looks cool it sounds good it goes like the proverbial shit off a shovel and for 16 grand you're saving four grand on a gs i think the xr is probably at that point anyway by the time you've got the te i just got something in my eye the only other bike that like only other adventure bike like i said that comes with adaptive cruise control is the multistrada v4 and that to get that one this comes with it as standard the multistrada you have to spec it or you have to get the sport mo model which is like 19 and a half grand starting price and it goes up to like 21 and a half if you want the sport one just not worth it as i said a couple of times now I took this bike out as a bit of uh, to try and be quite critical about it because I saw every everyone, everyone else's reviews going it's amazing it's like it's so good it does this it does that and I was like well no there's got to be some faults in it but there are but they are far outweighed by the pros far outweighed anyway thanks for joining me and uh, I'll see you in the next one